Last time we talked about what inheritance was at a conceptual level. We talked about what kind of problem it solves. And so we were in this situation where we were creating this virtual zoo and we had a virtual pet. And then we got some requests from players that we need um, a specialized type of pet. We need a bird and we need another specialized type of pet. We need a fish. And so rather than jam all of that code into one class into our virtual pet, we can actually use inheritance to create subclasses like bird and fish that inherit features from the base class. Um, and so terminology wise, you know, our virtual pet is our base class, our parent class, our super class. Those are all synonyms. And then bird and fish are our derived class, child class, and subclass. So we're going to turn over to a C Sharp project and we're going to build this virtual zoo. So it's going to be a game world that features a few different types of pets. We're going to start off making a virtual pet first. Um, that'll be our base class. And then we will go ahead and create two subclasses off of that. So before we do that, it's, it's useful to just think about what we're going to need to create because we didn't do a full UML um, class and object diagram for the whole application. But we want to create something where we have a game world and we can fill it with a couple different types of pets. So we know we're going to have program.cs. That's always going to be in our project and it's going to have our entry point for our application. We know we're going to have a virtual pet and we're probably going to have two subclasses off of that virtual pet. And then the other thing that we're going to need is some kind of world where we can put those pets. So we'll, we'll have a world class that is constructing all the pets and um, orchestrating whatever logic we want to happen in the world. We're going to create this from scratch. And the only thing additionally that we have in terms of starter files is there, there's going to be a, this ASCII text file um, in the canvas. Uh, where you can grab some of the ASCII art that I'm going to use in the project and you can see where it came from. So we're going to, in our project, create a dragon and we're going to create a giraffe, so we'll use these. There are a couple others that I threw in this file just for fun in case you wanted to make your own kraken or your own bird class. So let's head into Visual Studio and we're going to create a new project and I'm going to make it a .NET Core project. You always want to make sure that you are keeping your projects together. So I'm going to go into my intro to programming folder, class materials. This is week eight. Select this folder and let's call it virtual zoo. We've got our project. We can start building. Um, the habit that we want to get into when we're programming and building applications is that we build something small, we test it, and then we repeat that for the next feature, and we repeat that for the next feature. And the idea here is that we're constantly getting rewarded with actually seeing something working and verifying that it works before we move on to the next feature. And if you don't do that and you just code everything without ever hitting the play button, you're likely to have a ton of errors. And you may realize that uh, for some of the early features, you didn't code them right or you, you didn't think through them properly. So when you try to build something on top of that, the whole thing is broken and you kind of have to start from scratch. So the, the habit that I want to encourage in everyone, build something small, test it and repeat. And I'll try and demo that here. So as we're getting started, we know that we usually want to keep this program class, which has our entry point, the static void main, um, pretty clean. So what we want to do is let's get rid of this. And when we talked about what we need in the class, we talked about a world is probably where we want to store all of our pets. So I'm going to go ahead and create a world class. And let's add a world constructor. And one easy way to make sure that things are working is to just print something out to the console. So we can print out something like, welcome to the virtual zoo. And then read key. Press any key to exit. So we're putting this inside of the constructor, which means that as soon as we create a new world instance, these should run. So if I flip back over to program and I say world, my world is equal to a new world. 
and hit play. We should hopefully see those things printing out, and it should wait for us to press any key. Excellent. OK, feature one done. So let's make this a little prettier. We could do title equals virtual zoo. This is going to put the title into our um, console window. So if I run it again, it's going to replace the title bar in the console window with virtual zoo. And while we're at it, let's grab some ASCII text. So I'm just going to search for ASCII text, which will pull up this website that has a, tech, a banner text generator. And maybe we'll do virtual zoo as the name. And I'm just going to scroll through here. Uh, that one's not bad, so I'm going to select and copy that, bring it back into the project, and do right line. And so remember when we add the at sign at the beginning, this becomes a verbatim string, which means that we can actually put new line in, into the string. So we can hit enter, and that will actually render in the console window, which is not something you can do with regular strings. So we can have our title print out. Um, let's add some space here with uh, new line characters so that it'll print out our title, it'll print out welcome, and then there'll be a couple spaces before exit shows up. There we go. It's looking good. So we tested a, a small feature. We made sure that our world constructor was working. And now let's go ahead and do a similar thing. But the next feature we want to add is to create a virtual pet. So I'm going to go to project, add class, virtual pet. And we're going to do a couple of things here. We're going to create some fields. So going off of our rough UML from the whiteboard. We had a string name, we had a string type, and we had a double weight. Um, and we didn't have this on the whiteboard, but let's add it so that we can add some color to our application. We're going to do a console color, and this will be the, the color of the text that we print out. We've got some fields. By default, all of these are private when we don't specify an access modifier, which means they can only be accessed from within inside of virtual pet, which is fine for now. We're going to come back and change those later. But let's also add a public constructor, virtual pet. And when we're creating a constructor, um, this is a good place to initialize your fields. So we want to make sure that we're accepting a name and a color and a type and a weight. And so these are all local variables. These are all parameters for the constructor. So name will get passed in. And then what we want to do is put that into our field for virtual pet um, and do the same thing for color and do the same thing for type and do the same thing for weight. So in order to see something running, um, we probably want to create a method here so that we can like have the virtual pet speak. Let's call this our greet method. And void, we're using void here to indicate that this method doesn't return anything, that um, it just runs. And in this case, it's going to print something out to the console and then return nothing. So our greet method, since we've got a color here, as one of our fields, we're going to use that. We're going to do foreground color equals color. And it's complaining at me that uh, it doesn't know what foreground color is. And that's because up here, we haven't brought in system.console. So we're setting the color, the foreground color of our console. Then we can right line. We're going to use an interpolated string here to say, hi, my name is. And with string interpolation, we can go ahead, if we have the dollar sign, then we can insert variables directly into our string. So it can say, hi, my name is. And right line, I'm a type. 
And so type will be something like the species. So it might be like, hi, I'm a rat, or hi, I'm a hamster. Um, and then at the end, what we want to do is a little bit of cleanup, the reset color method. This comes from our uh, system.console class. We'll take whatever colors are currently set and reset them back to the system default. So it basically undoes this line of code where we set the foreground color. Okay, so we built a feature, but we haven't really tested that it works. So what we want to do is flip back over to um, our world, make sure that we save our virtual pet. And when we are in our world, we want to create a pet. And normally this would be the part of the class where we do this together and we figure out what type of pet we want to create. But we're just going to use what we created um, in the last class, last time we did this, last semester. So we're going to create a virtual pet. And last time, everyone wanted to make a pet called Junior. So we've got Junior. It is a new virtual pet. And we have to pass in those four parameters that we defined. So we're going to pass in Junior with capital J. We're going to pass in a console color. Let's make this white. Um, junior was a hamster who was two pounds. And then to make sure that we see something on the screen, we want to call that public method that we created that's called greet. So we save it, <laughs> we cross our fingers, we hit play, and there we go. We see in white text, it's printing out, hi, my name is Junior, I'm a hamster. So looking at this, it's a little boring, and I kind of want to change some of the spacing here. Like, I want welcome to the virtual zoo. I want there to be some new lines here before we introduce the pet. And then um, maybe what we want to do is add some graphics here so that there's something visual. So I'm going to close this. Let's add a couple spaces. Actually, let's do this. Let's um, write line here are the zoo animals. And at the beginning of this, we can go ahead and put a new line to space it out. So this should fix the white space. There we go. Here are the zoo animals. And then inside of this virtual pet, what we want to do is maybe create a public void draw avatar method. And so this method we'll use to draw a picture of whatever the animal is so that we get something visual showing up on the page. I'm going to do a similar structure where we grab the color and we reset the color at the end. And then in the middle of these two lines, we want to actually write the graphic here. So we're going to use another verbatim string. And then I'm going to go ahead and grab from the text. Uh, we've got this fun little <laughs> generic smiley face. And usually it's a good practice to make sure that you cite wherever you're getting your art from, because someone made this. Uh, even though it looks simple, we should still credit them. So I'm going to add the source in here. So we've created this draw avatar method. Going back to the world, and let's go ahead and junior dot draw avatar. And I want to move that above the greet function. So we see a picture of Junior's face, and then Junior introduces himself. So here are zoo animals. Big old goofy smiley face. Hi, I'm Junior. I'm a hamster. All right, we're cruising along. We have our generic virtual pet class. So this is going to be our base class. And now we can make some of the derived classes. So let's start with something more exciting. Let's create a dragon class. So inheritance, when we were doing our UML, it was this arrow structure that we drew to say that this class inherits from virtual pet. But in terms of code, the way that we specify that is with a colon. So we specify the derived class, and then we specify the base class. So we can say dragon colon virtual pet to say that dragon inherits from virtual pet. And then inside of here, we can go ahead and add our own um, pieces of information that a, a dragon has that is distinct from um, the generic virtual pet. So a dragon, let's say it's it's got its hoard of treasure. Uh, that'll be a string, and then we can also add in um, a wingspan. So dragons have wings, and these, let's add a little comment here, are, are fields that only 
the dragon has, not the virtual pet. So these are those unique features. If, if I flip back to the UML, these are the things that just the child class has that the parent class does not have. And again, these are, these are private by default if we don't specify the word private, and that's fine for what we're doing right now. Um, in general, you want to like default to using the most restricted access, which would be private, uh, as you can. And then when you need to make things um, public, or we'll learn about another keyword protected in a minute. OK, so why is this complaining at me? Um, if I hover over here, it's telling me there's no argument given for the formal parameter name of um, that constructor that we created for virtual pet that required a string console color string double. And so in order to get this class working, we actually have to create a constructor. So I'm going to create a public constructor here. Take it a name, console color. Uh, let's take in a treasure and let's take in a wingspan. And we're going to see this colon that we used up here. We're also going to use it down here. And when we use the colon here and say the keyword base, that actually means that we're, we're actually able to, to call the virtual pet constructor. So we're able, from our dragon constructor, to go ahead and run whatever's in here. So what we want to do is make sure that we pass in the four parameters that we need for the base uh, virtual pet constructor. We need the name, the color, the type, and the weight. So name, we've got that already here. Color, we've got that already here. The type, all our dragons are going to have a type of dragon. So we can just pass that in as a string. And the weight, you know, we could do this in a number of ways, but let's just take our wingspan and we'll say, you know, however big their wingspan is, their weight is some multiple of that. So we're going to pass our name in, our color in, our type is just going to be dragon, and then the weight, let's say it's our wingspan uh, times 100. So now that error goes away, we've set up a constructor that goes ahead and uh, invokes the base constructor, so the virtual pet constructor. Um, but we haven't actually done anything with treasure and wingspan yet, so we can see that these are grayed out. So let's make sure that we initialize those here. Treasure equals the local parameter treasure, and same thing for wingspan. Wingspan equals the local parameter. And so now that we've got um, a constructor, let's make sure that we can actually create a dragon. And we'll, we'll watch what happens with this code using the debugger to actually trace what's going on. So if I go back to the world, let's create a dragon. Um, and let's do Bahamut is a new dragon. who is red, treasure is lots of gold, and let's say the wingspan is 20 feet wide. So, you know, so far this should compile. I'm not getting any errors. If I run it though, we're not going to actually see anything with the dragon because we've just created one. We didn't actually tell it to greet or um, do anything interesting, but we, we do want to trace what's happening with our dragon using the debugger. Let's drop a breakpoint in here. So if I click to the left of the line number, that will give me a breakpoint, which tells the runtime engine that as soon as you hit this line of code, we should kick over to the debugger and we can poke around our code, look at variables and see what's happening line by line. So if I hit play with that breakpoint in there, what happens is that these lines of code execute and then it stops here. So we can see, you know, virtual zoo, here's our smiley, here's junior. Um, and we're stopped here, and we have our controls at the top where we can stop debugging, we can continue uh, from this breakpoint and have the code continue running until it hits the next breakpoint. Um, and then we can step into, step over, and step out. And step into means we're gonna, if there's a constructor or method being invoked, we're gonna follow that and we're gonna step into it to the next line of code. So I'm gonna hit F11 to step into. And we can see that we end up here at the constructor of dragon. Those um, arguments that we passed in for each of these parameters are filled in. So if I hover over name, we can see Bahamut. 
If I hover over color, we can see red, treasure, we should see lots of gold. And then we can see that this base um, line is being invoked next. So before anything that we put in the constructor is invoked, if I hit F11, we can see that we end up here at the virtual pet. So this is running for our dragon. And line by line, we can see the name just got filled in with Bahamut, the color just got filled in with red, the type just got filled in with dragon, the weight just got filled in with 2000, F11 to continue. And now we can see after that base constructor has run, our dragon specific constructor is running. So the treasure is currently null. And then if I hit F11, it turns into lots of gold. The wingspan is zero. And then it turns into 20 and then press any key to exit, and then read key. So I'm gonna kill the debugger, I'm gonna get rid of our breakpoint, but hopefully that illustrates that the order in which things are running here. So when we construct a dragon, it actually goes to our base constructor first, and then runs whatever we put inside of here. And so our dragon, because we've set up this inheritance, there's actually under the hood, a name, type, weight, color associated with it because it inherits from virtual pet. If we go back to the world, we can actually Bahamut dot and see what the autocomplete pulls up. We can see that because it inherits from virtual pet, it gets virtual pets draw avatar method and it gets virtual pets greet method. So we could go ahead and do draw avatar and Bahamut dot greet. And if I hit play, we should see that um, it's now printed in red and we've got Bahamut and Dragon printing out and we've got our you know, default um, smiley face that we put into our virtual pet printing out along with this information. So cool, we have figured out a way to share code between virtual pet and Dragon using inheritance. So anything a virtual pet can do, a Dragon can do because a Dragon is a virtual pet. Um, but that also means that we can add our own thing here. So let's say we want our dragon to be able to fly. Make sure that this doesn't return anything because we're just going to print something out to the console. And so for printing this out, we, I mean, we could just do right line, I'm flying. And that would work as long as we make sure we're using static system.console at the top. We can come back to world. We can say Bahamut.fly and run it, and we should have something that now Bahamut can do that uh, a, a generic virtual pet can't do. But you can see that you know this isn't using the console color. You know maybe we want to say something more specific, like Bahamut is flying or Bahamut the dragon is flying. So let's kill this and check out our dragon. And remember how I said that the dragon has a name and a type and a color that comes from virtual pet. Let's see what happens if I try and access them. So I want to say the foreground color is equal to color, just like we were doing inside of virtual pet here. And hmm, so I'm getting an error. And if I hover over the error, it's telling me that virtual pet dot color. So that color field that we define in virtual pet is inaccessible due to its protection level. So if we go back to virtual pet, um, remember the protection level, that access modifier, is private by default. So you can imagine that all of these say private. And private means that um, only virtual pet can access these. The alternative would be we could make them all public, which means that anyone can access these fields and manipulate them, which is generally not a good thing. You want to limit uh, access to as restricted of access as you can. Um, so public would actually technically fix our issue where we can now use color here, but there's a better way to do this. So protected is another access modifier that allows us to say that virtual pet can access these and any subclasses can access name, type, weight, color. So if I save this and check out my dragon again, that error is gone. And now inside of dragon, we're able to access any of those fields from virtual pet. So we could go ahead and print out, uh, let's print out name, the type is now flying. And we can reset the color afterwards. 
So if I run it now, we should hopefully see Bahamut the dragon is now flying and it's printing out in red. So let's take a second and if I go back to virtual pet, I wanna drop in a comment here so that we, we have some explanation of what protected means. And I'm just gonna grab it from um, another file and paste it in. So protected is a new access modifier that we can use in addition to public and private. And here are those three um, descriptions that we went through of who can access the fields. And while we're at it, let's, let's add a comment here to the dragon to explain what this constructor is doing. So let's paste this in. Um, and now we're ready to kind of take the next step and add another feature. I think that what we should do is this looks funky. We've got, you know, this generic smiley, which is fine for Junior, but for Bahamut, because Bahamut's a dragon, we probably want something more dragon-like printing out here. So let's go ahead and do that. Inside of dragon, let's create a public void draw avatar method. And we're gonna go ahead and grab our dragon graphic. So foreground color is our color, right line. Gonna use another verbatim string, paste in our dragon. And then let's make sure to reset the color afterwards. And if we run it now, because in our world we are calling Bahamut draw avatar, we should see not the generic smiley, but actually the dragon image that we put into our dragon's draw avatar method. There we go. We got our dragon. It's flying. It's looking good. One thing that I want to point out, which this is kind of a preview of what's coming later, is um, if I hover over draw avatar, it's giving me a warning. So red squiggle error, green squiggle warning. And the warning is intended to tell you like, you know, you're doing something a little funky. Um, you might not have intended to do this or there's a better way to do it. And it's telling me that dragon draw avatar hides the inherited member virtual pet draw avatar. You know, if this was intended, you should use this keyword called new. Um, so in the polymorphism video, uh, you'll learn about how we can kind of do this in a better way. But for now, just know that because virtual pet has a draw avatar method and we've created a method called draw avatar here for the dragon, that means that we don't have a way when we're talking about our dragon to say run the virtual pet draw avatar or run um, the dragon's draw avatar. Our dragon draw avatar method, that's the one that's gonna run when we say bahamut.draw avatar. So let's practice this one more time. Let's create a new class. And um, last semester when we ran this, I asked the class what to make and we made a giraffe. So I'm gonna create a giraffe class um, and we're gonna create Jeffrey the classic giraffe. So we're gonna do the same process that we went through with the dragon, uh, except that you know giraffe doesn't have, have treasure. It doesn't have a wingspan. So instead we'll, we'll create like an, a neck length for our giraffe. We will make sure that it inherits from virtual pet using the colon virtual pet. And then we're gonna have to do the same thing we did with the dragon where we make a constructor and we make sure that it has all of the information we need. So console color color, uh, we're gonna use weight here. And then let's also have neck length get passed in. We are going to call the base constructor and we're going to pass in the name, the color, the type here. We can just pass in a string giraffe. Make sure that I spell it right and the weight. And then inside of the giraffes constructor, we can set our neck length equal to whatever has been passed in. And while we're at it, let's do what we did with the dragon and draw avatar. We're gonna set our foreground color. Oh, make sure to using static system dot color uh, system dot console 
foreground color equals. Oh, it's a great day for typing. And let's grab this giraffe. I'm gonna use a verbatim string again, paste in that giraffe. Oh, paste it in here. Make sure to fix this because our field is C, uh, capital C for color. And then reset the color afterwards. So we've got our draft, we've got a draw avatar method, and back inside of our world, we could actually create Jeffrey the giraffe. So let's go and do that. Giraffe, Jeffrey equals new giraffe, Jeffrey, um, that's not how you spell that, Jeffrey. And Jeffrey is going to be dark yellow. I think giraffes are pretty heavy, but you can put in a better value. I'm going to say it's uh, two tons. And I think um, the neck length, let's take a guess. Maybe it's like five and a half feet. And so Jeffrey is going to have all the stuff from Virtual Pet again. So we can do Jeffrey dot and see that we've got greet and draw avatar so draw avatar jeffrey dot greet if i run it we should hopefully see we've got um whoops that is not the right color dark yellow now we should run it and see you know we've got our generic junior hamster, we've got our red flying Bahamut, and we've got our cool Jeffrey the giraffe. And if we wanted to, we could go into our giraffe and do the same thing, like maybe giraffes need a, a special feature, like how our dragon hat fly. Maybe our giraffe needs, let's do void eat leaves. And we're gonna do the same structure, foreground color is color. We're gonna reset the color and let's do right line. Um, name is chewing on some leaves from a high tree. And so back in world, we should be able to do jeffrey.eat leaves. And Jeffrey is chewing on some leaves from a high tree. So we've created our base class and we've got our derived classes here. Each has their own features. Bahamut, all dragons can fly, but Jeffrey can't fly. So if I try and do Jeffrey.fly, I'm gonna get an error. Give it a second to trigger the error. Yep, there's no fly method under Jeffrey, so um, only uh, dragons can fly, only giraffes can eat leaves, and Junior can just draw avatar and greet. It can't fly or eat leaves. So one last wrinkle that I want to throw at you. Um, we talked about last time that these inheritance relationships are an is a relationship where giraffe is a virtual pet. And there's another type of relationship which instead of using inheritance, you use composition uh, when it comes to code, where instead of is a it's has a so we're gonna we're gonna have um our virtual pets have a uh present so we're gonna add a present class so if we flip back over i'm gonna create a new class called present and it's gonna be a simple present um we're, we're just gonna create a public string name and maybe public int quantity and let's create a public constructor that takes in the name and takes in a quantity and we'll we'll have a default value if if the quantity isn't specified it'll just be one so our name is equal to what gets passed in and our quantity is equal to whatever gets passed in 
So this is really a, a super simple class that um, exposes public fields for name and quantity, but it allows us to create something like um, we could have a box of Lego and we could have uh, how many Lego pieces are in that box represented in this class. So if I save this and let's head back to our virtual pet. So we've got a present class. What we want to do is make it so that any um, virtual pet can have a present given to it. So we're going to do protected so that our derived classes could potentially access this. And we're going to create a field called current present. And this has now created a spot on all of our pets where we can put an instance of this present class. So with my virtual pet, we need some way to probably give a virtual pet a present. So I'm going to create a method here. It's a public method. And let's say it's take present. And it takes uh, as a parameter a present. And all it does is take our field up here, which, whoops, this should be a capital C. Um, so this should be Pascal case. So current present, we're going to set that equal to whatever gets passed in. So we've created a way uh, using this class. So we're, we're going to be able to instantiate a present, and then we're going to be able to give it to any of our pets using this method, the take present method. And then last thing that we should add before we can start implementing is under this greet method, let's go ahead and say if there is a present. So if the present does not equal null, and remember by default, if we have a reference type up here, so like we have anything with our custom, a custom class that we've created, the default value is going to be null. So we can actually check if a present has been given, um, then it would be set to an actual instance. But if no present has been given, it's going to be null. So we can say if the current present is not null, then let's write line. And we'll just print out something simple. I have um, current present dot quantity times current present dot name. So if I make sure to save all my files and hit run, we shouldn't see anything different. We should see no errors, which is great. Um, let's actually, inside of virtual pet, we'll extend this a, a bit. So if there is no pres, if there is a present, we'll print this out. And if there is no present, else, right line, I have no present. So hopefully, what we should see is that for all of our pets, when we greet. Uh, call this greet method. They'll print out their name type and they'll print out that they don't have a present. So let's run it and see. I have no present. I have no present. I have no present. So it seems to be working so far. So what we can do now is if we flip back over to world, we can let's give um, our pal Jeffrey here a present. So we're going to create a new instance. This will be uh, Jeffrey present is equal to a new present. And let's say this is action figures sticking with the Toys R Us theme. And let's give Jeffrey five of them. So then we can call that method that exists on all virtual pets that is called take present, where we pass in Jeffrey's present. And we should do this before we actually call the greet method, because remember, our greet method is the thing that, that actually prints out and checks whether there's a present. So I'm going to just take these lines, and I'm going to bubble them up by holding Alt and pressing up. Um, to move both of those lines here before we actually draw the av avatar, run greet, and eat any leaves. So I hit play. We should see Junior has no present. Bahamut has no present. Jeffrey has five action figures. 
So this, this may not seem very special, but it's actually a really important thing to have clear in your head is the difference between is a and has a. So is a, just to review, our giraffe is a virtual pet, our dragon is a virtual pet. And that's when we go ahead and we use this inheritance structure to say that dragon inherits from virtual pet. Composition, this idea of has a, is just where, um, in this case, we have a present, and that's just a field of our virtual pet. So our virtual pet has a, it owns a present. And that's all there really is at the moment to is a versus has a and, and setting up inheritance. One thing that I do want to point out, um, right now virtual pet looks like it doesn't inherit from anything, right? There's no colon and then something next to it, but that's actually not true. So let's go back to our world and um, let's I'm going to put in a line a comment here that says all classes inherit from objects which provides a two string method so we could take any of these classes and call two string on them so right line let's go ahead and just grab junior and print out you can see two string exists which prints out a string that represents the current object we did not declare that anywhere inside of our virtual pet. There's no two string method here. So where's that coming from? And that's coming from the fact that in .NET, all classes inherit from object. And if I pull up uh, the documentation page for object class, we can see, you know, this is the base class of all .NET classes. And it comes with a few methods. It comes with a way to check whether two objects are equal to one another. It comes with a way to get the type um, of whatever instance you have. It comes with a way to get a string. So let's just run this. We'll see what we get. It's telling us that uh, Junior is, um, it lives within the virtual, new name, virtual zoo namespace and it is a virtual pet. So even though we didn't implement this two string method, that comes along for the ride because you can imagine um, it's as if all classes that you create have this hidden inheritance structure where it inherits from object. So I'm gonna just go back to the world. I'm gonna comment this out since we don't need this cluttering up our zoo. And we finished our application. So we've seen what inheritance looks like at a conceptual level, and now we've finally seen what it looks like when we actually implement it inside of code. And it gives us this power to create specialized types and share code um, across classes in a nice way.